King Mondo has been destroyed! Woohoo! The Machine Empire is in a bit of shambles, and they're not quite sure what to do with the sudden loss of their beloved leader and dear father. But don't worry, kiddies, a replacement is on the way. In the form of Louis Kaboom, a smart bomb launched by Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa, recently returned from the M51 galaxy. They intend to use Louis Kaboom to destroy the Machine Empire from within and resume their positions as leaders of the bad guys in the Earth sector. Unfortunately, the remote control that's used to control Louis is damaged beyond repair, and Louis becomes now the self-appointed leader of the Machine Empire. For a couple episodes, anyways. Well, no one seems to like this situation. Not one bit. But there isn't really much they can do with it, because Louis Kaboom has actually proven himself to be rather shrewd at maneuvering politically, so he doesn't have to put himself in harm's way. But then help arrives in the form of King Mondo and Queen Machina's first manufactured son, Prince Gasket, and his lovely robotic bride, Archerina. Prince Gasket has come to take his place as the rightful ruler of the Machine Empire, but first they must get rid of Louis Kaboom. Well, Louis has no intent of leaving his current position, so Archerina infects him with a love virus, as opposed to a potion, to get him to do whatever she wants. What does she want him to do? Destroy the Power Rangers himself which he lovingly obliges. Learning about the arrival of Prince Gasket and Archerina beforehand, Trey of Wisdom sends a message to the Power Rangers, letting them know that he's sending them reinforcements because they are in grave danger. Those reinforcements take the form of a giant meteorite flying towards Earth, weighing nearly a million tons. Oscar, Ray, hurry! Shinji can't hold up that angel much longer! You dropped it, didn't you? You little mother Yeah, you better run away before I plant my dag cast foot so far up your ass it's gonna feel like third impact! Again! And identifies itself as the... Warrior Wheel. Now the Warrior Wheel, unfortunately, is... a little back heavy. It will always tilt backwards. In fact, you can't set it upright and let go it will always fall over. So you always have to hold it up, okay? And this is all that the warrior wheel looks like. Oh yeah, by the way, the warrior wheel is the weapon that is used to destroy Louis Kaboom. Woohoo. Yeah, this is the warrior wheel in its wheel mode. But wait, there's more. Now there is a reason why it's called the Deluxe Automorphin Warrior Wheel. And that is because it can auto-morph. These two red tabs on the back, they are to the key to this whole thing. And the reason why it's so, well, side-heavy actually in wheel mode, I said back-heavy earlier, I meant side-heavy, is because it can roll down and fall quite hard on these two red buttons. What happens when it falls over on the two red buttons? I bumped the camera, that was bad of me. What happens when you bump it? Well, watch. Well, well, well. How about that? Both arms came out at the same time. I did that take for the teaser trailer for Power Rangers Zeo. I did that thing six times, and not one time did that arm come out. Amazingly enough, it did this time. So there is the deluxe warrior wheel in, well, warrior mode. An auto-transformation gimmick has never happened before or since the Deluxe Warrior Wheel came out. And really, the Deluxe labeling... The only reason it's labeled... Oh, yeah. The arms are floppy because of transformation. The only reason it has the Deluxe label on it is because it's too scale with the other actual Deluxe transforming Megazords. But... Um, yeah, anyways, some nice detailing on the feet there, large open back on it, which is unavoidable, and try not to think of this as the standard deluxe transforming. This is more of a play set, so don't beat yourself about the head when you try to say, oh, this is actually a, um, it's actually a deluxe size toys. No, it's deluxe size, but it's not a deluxe type deluxe class toy. 
and then the oh crap I didn't focus close enough the American football player styled helmet you see the original Japanese version of this was called tackle boy and the whole setup was supposed to be an American football player oh in case you're wondering the DX tackle boy and the deluxe automorphin warrior wheel exactly the same toy no difference whatsoever well that's not entirely true there is one minor difference you see, here's the thing. The warrior wheel is actually meant to, well, roll about like a giant wheel. I'm not going to do it, of course, because I'm too lazy to reset it every time after it falls over and automorphs. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. But be assured, it does actually roll. Because it's so back heavy, you actually have to give it a real good throw. Make sure you only do it on a hard, flat surface. Don't do it on concrete or carpet, because one, the carpet won't activate the transformation. Two, it'll slow it down and three, it'll just get torn up nice and thoroughly by granite or whatever kind of flooring you have. Anyways, yeah, just do it on wood or linoleum or whatever you have. Anyways, yeah, the thing that the toy designers came up with, and they, I actually give them credit for this, is you could just plunk it down and let it transform. You know, why are you going to go rolling about when you could just drop it and here comes a little robot? Well, they came up with an answer for that in the form of a cardboard target, which is about six inches by six inches. By the way, why do I still have this after so many years? Because nowadays I almost always hang on to the box of just about every toy I've collected since 1993. Just about, except for the ones that I get secondhand. Anyways, yeah, this is what saving the boxes is good for. You can stick crap in them that you don't need anymore and it'll fit in there just fine. No questions asked. So you just stick that in there and throw it in your walk-in closet and that's it. Oh. I'm horrified. Morphin Spring Action Deluxe Warrior Wheel. Whoops. I've been mislabeling on all these years. Eh, oh well. Anyways, yeah, I've got the box, and I've got the target. I've never used the target because I pulled it out of the box about 20 minutes ago. So, yeah, what's the point of a painted target? The point of a painted target is you're supposed to roll your warrior wheel on down the carpet. Oh, wait, I told you not to put it on carpet. You're supposed to roll it on down your hard, flat surface, and when it gets here, it'll spin and then transform the way it's supposed to on the target, and I'll be damned if that arm didn't pop out again all by itself. You and me are having words later. So yeah, that's the point of the target. Now here's the thing about the target. Uh, obviously, the name Warrior Wheel was not around in Choriki Sentai O-Ranger, the original Japanese series from 1995. It was originally called Tackle Boy. And so the only difference between the Deluxe Warrior Wheel set and the DX Tackle Boy set is the target. It's still cardboard, it's still the same size, but the graphic is completely different. And, oh yeah, it says Tackle Boy. So, yeah, that's why one is different from the other. It's just the, the slightest little change. How am I going to get this in frame? I don't know. I don't care. Very rarely do automatic transforming toys appeal to me let alone good ones even show up on the market at all, which a lot of people like. Hell, the Transformers brand name has only done it how many times in the last 25 years? So it's a rare thing to see. This is actually a case where it goes well. Now there is, of course, a downside to it, and that is you can't pose it. The arms do not twist forward and backwards. No elbow joint, no neck joint, no leg joints, anything like that. If I may be nitpicky for a moment here, I kind of wish that two deluxe-sized warrior wheels had been made. One that was auto-transforming. By the way, don't believe the toy commercials where you see the warrior wheel jump in the air when it transforms. That is complete and total television commercial bullshit. So, don't believe what you see. Anyways, I wish that they made this version, which is auto-transforming and the proportions are kind of weird. And then I wish they had made a second one that was the exact same size, but that could transform manually, and you could actually pose with it. Arms, maybe legs, most likely the neck. And you, you know, you could have had your pick of one or the other or both. 
they both be sitting on the shelf side by side, and you could say, oh, I want the one that poses or that I can transform myself. Or, oh, I want the one that doesn't pose but automatically transforms, you know? I wish there had been a choice, but what we have here is not bad. Huh, what a coincidence. I've got the video for the Deluxe Super Zeo Megazord on the computer right now uploading to YouTube. There's like another... Well, now it's like 15 minutes until it's fully uploaded. Then i got to scramble in there and get my annotations and all the keywords and blah, 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 things like that. And I'm shooting the video for the Deluxe Automorph and Worry Wheel both on my birthday, my 28th birthday, September 23rd. How about that? So in a strange way, this is my present to you. Sort of. And oh my goodness, what a way to finish, huh? I picked up all of these in 1996, and they are still just about as good as they were way back then. Yeah, the gray parts have got color standing, and the pink is almost white now. And there's a crap load of dust over all these guys. You should have seen the Warrior Wheel a couple weeks ago. Whew, boy. And I'm not even going to bring up the interior of Pyramidus, even though I just did. It's been a pretty incredible journey for, not only for these toys, but for my appreciation for them over the years. By the way, for the record, if anybody asks me if I'm going to review Deluxe Ark the Conqueror's Ord, your post will be removed automatically. I'm getting sick and tired. People ask me why I'm getting pissed off on YouTube for being mean to other people. Well, if people would just watch the video. You might actually learn something useful. Do not ask me if I'm going to review Ark, okay? Because I'm not. I don't like Ark the Conqueror's Ark, okay? It was a stupid character, and the toy was not that great, even though it did come with awesome arms. I'm still not reviewing him, okay? Do not ask. I've just put my foot down. That's it. But what I've got is awesome. I love these things. They are all great. kind of wish I'd had a posable version of this, but eh. Oh, and by the way, trying to get this thing to fit into the arms of the Super Zero Megazord... Don't really try, because this is too heavy, and the arms just can't deal with it. It would have been nice if they designed the toys to actually do that and interact with each other, but I won't blame them, because, heaven forbid, we might actually have lost some of the posability on those arms. My only regret in doing the videos for these is that I didn't have the energy or the stamina for them. I actually did each one of these videos about a week apart from each other, as opposed to the video reviews I did for the Power Animals from Hayakuji Sentai Gal Ranger, where I shot them like literally two and three per day. These were like one per week, and I didn't have the energy that I usually have in the videos. Like, I honestly, I think my review for the Super Zeo Megazord was kind of crappy, but I think they still turned out okay. Certainly the responses that I've been getting from YouTubers has been more or less on the positive side for each of these. Not just, oh, I had this toy when I was younger, but you also did these reviews justice. Once again, thank you for your continued support on all of that. And yes, I know the videos run too long, but that's just how I operate. And hey, I can get away with it because I'm on CollectionDX.com's YouTube channel. <laughs> so suck it, yo! <laughs> oh yeah, listen to me being all gangster. Whatever. In retrospect, these are just awesome designs for Power Rangers. N n no, not just Power Rangers, but also in Choriki Sentai Oenji, because these are based on the original Japanese toys. The engineering that went into these things was pretty amazing. Yeah, I wish there had been posable legs here. Maybe hips here. I wish there had been an alternate version of that. Wish they had come with some of the separate weapons for the S Super Zeozords. I wish there had been a light-up feature in there. See, each one had a little, one or two little things I wish they'd done differently. But that's kind of the thing that endears me to them, is because they only needed one or two minor changes. I mean, this is 2010, and some of the designs we've been getting have just been getting worse and worse and worse every year. So these are definitely a tribute to the design from the 1990s. They're blocky, they're solid, they're just fun, people. You know, they're fun. They're awesome. And you want to know something else that I really like? These are all so close to the original Japanese versions that I don't want to go looking for the original Japanese versions. Pan applications, decals, mold designs, everything is exactly the same. Well, except for the cardboard target for that.
So if you're able to find any of the deluxe transformable Zords from Power Rangers Zeo, you're totally in for a treat, because they really are that great. In fact, the only toys that I still want to get from this series is the King Smasher from O-Ranger, because I'm not going to get the Zeo Blaster, which has extra weapons and crap that I don't want. And maybe the Gold Ranger Staff, I'm not... I'm, even after, what, 15 years, I'm still torn on whether I want that or not. Oh, and replacement straps for my Electronic Zeonizer. This was actually supposed to be my first of my Power Rangers Zeo review, but I couldn't find... But the wrist straps are like two inches too short. So this probably, hopefully, won't be my last review in regards to Power Rangers Zeo. And maybe I can review something from Choriki Sentai O-Ranger in getting the King Smasher. That would be awesome. So I'm closing this out. I hope you enjoyed my coverage of the Deluxe Transforming Zords from Power Rangers Zeo, because I certainly enjoyed it. And that's what counts here. And now, as the closing credits run, I should dazzle you one time with that awesome theme song. And so, this is Ava Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off. Hey!